What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV outside here, the Seoul World Cup Stadium. It's finished by and two, Tottenham won. First loss of pre season. And I thought it was a de deserved loss today. I thought Bayern was a much better side. Spurs struggled, uh, particularly in the first half. I felt we were very sloppy in our passing, um, giving Bayern way too many easy chances. I thought Vicario was pretty poor for the goal that we did concede, albeit he did make a pretty good save as well in that action. Um, but what do you make out of it? I mean, it was very hard conditions, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was, it's difficult to say whether, you know, we're just out on our feet completely exhausted uh, from how much uh, exertion we've uh, had through this Asia trip, you know, two games, a lot of training, a lot of hot weather, and uh, Bayern only, what, arrived yesterday or two days ago, yeah. so, you know, they're going to be a lot fresher, I don't know how many pre-season games they've had as well, so, obviously, they're all looking to impress the new manager as well, so, look, there's a number of excuses you can give, but, obviously, the passing the, out the back was really sloppy, we couldn't really break Bayern's press whatsoever, they found it pretty easy to break our press, I felt, and uh, we looked completely on our feet, uh, out on Very our legs lagging, out there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I could have easily said the same back, back in the last season, we looked leggy and we looked tired. And, um, you know, it's hard to say whether that was the, the cause for all our problems today, but we were definitely off it. Uh, I don't think we had a shot in the first half, did we? We couldn't get near their goal. We were just making constant mistakes. Uh, it should have been two or three yeah. uh, at half time, to be honest. It wasn't for some poor finishing from Bayern Munich. We gave them countless amount of chances and uh, we didn't really turn up, unfortunately. Um, the second half was a lot better. Yeah, it was a lot better. I think uh, in the first half, I actually thought from an attacking perspective, it, there was nothing in it, but I thought from a defensive perspective, Spence played really well at left back. Um, a number of blocks, a number of tackles. And I thought, you know, at left back, first time we're seeing him there, first start as well of pre-season. I thought he actually coped with it quite well. I thought um, when it had to do some one-on-one -on -one defending against Nabry, I thought he um, struggled a bit. I thought what he did really well was kind of like off the ball defending where, you know, cutting out passes, clearances, uh, being aggressive, mm. those kind of things he was good. Uh, on the ball, I did think he looked uncomfortable. I don't think, obviously the team didn't really help him. Obviously we were terrible in that first half. We couldn't really get on the ball anyway, but I did feel he looked a bit awkward on that left-hand side to be honest, cutting inside a lot. Um, he didn't look great when he was inverting on that side. Uh, obviously from the right-hand side, we've seen him look a bit better. Um, but yeah, it remains to be seen whether um, left back is not is something we're going to see um, of him um, in the future because I don't know I don't know how he looked I don't know if, based on today which is not that much to go on he didn't look totally comfortable on the left but I thought defensively he had some good moments yeah yeah second half uh, did get better after we made a few changes I thought uh, Basuma came on in the six and I thought when he first came on he was completely out of sorts losing the ball a number of times there were a, a few good moments in there were showing a showcase showcasing his dribbling ability and stuff like that but again I thought apart from that absolute wonder strike from Pedro Porro which was an unbelievable goal wasn't it yeah um, I mean still, I, there I wasn't have, too much in there for us I have to see it again but on first viewing it looked like it went straight through the keeper's hands and I don't know if that was my view I was quite high up I have to see the goal again it looked like a really good strike but then it looked like then I was looking at the replay it looked like it went right, right through the keeper so maybe it was a mistake after what I thought it, it was top bins um, it was a good strike but but it looked like maybe the key, I don't know I have to watch it again I have to see it again I haven't seen it once um, I thought we were better in the second half I have to say second half um, I thought Bergdahl was, it was exceptional I yeah, think he, he, was, he like, was our best player he hands was, down. I was about to say he's my man of the match I thought he was amazing everything he did was does it with a touch of class even when he missed that chance the way he got that chance he did so well to make it for himself and then he looked like he might have overrun it and uh, got that tackle in to save the situation unfortunately couldn't finish it what I what I'm loving about Bergdahl is obviously we praise him for his silkiness and um, the way he glides past players and his uh, awareness of um, his awareness uh, of appreciation where everyone is on the pitch is great but today he was making some quality challenges great sliding challenges he works so hard he's a very physical player doesn't get bullied he definitely um, holds his own against yeah, a lot puts of very himself about yeah, massively, like yeah. I'm, I'm seeing him barging his into tenacity Pal as well I'm seeing him barging into Paulinia and Goretzka a lot more like physical players and experienced players he's holding his own in these duels and um, really really impressed by Bergman from that today and yeah, I thought it was just the one ball. moment wasn't there that where he passed and you know, you know Bayern could have been in on goal that was the only kind of down point in his performance I thought yeah I thought um, I don't remember that one specifically to be honest but I thought uh, on the ball he was he was top notch and around the penalty box it was just a shame we didn't make the most of a lot of his good play because I thought he played really really but every well. time he plays for us every single time <laughs> he seems to be the best player on the park every yeah. single game yeah and the 18 years of age <laughs> 
every single time and it just I keep banging on about it every game but I'm telling you this guy I think he's going to explode this season I really do it's like, yeah, again, it's, this was a tough buy in midfield. It wasn't just the youngsters in the second half, though, on you. You had, as I said, Halidi and Goretzka, really tough players. And, you know, I thought Archie Gray, to be honest, struggled a lot in that He did struggle. Half. I thought he looked a bit out. I mean, again, it's, I don't want to sound harsh, but he did look a bit out of his depth in that, in that game yesterday. But to, today, be, to be honest, I think um, the majority of our players struggled today. It yeah, you can't just put saying. it on Archie Gray. I'm, like, not, I'm not. I think... I can't think of one player that really stood out apart from Berg Bell. I think every single uh, one of those players struggled today. <laughs> Emerson actually stood out uh, Emerson, when he came yeah. on. Emerson was brilliant yeah, actually when he came on. Yeah, he, Again. Did. he looked really good. He looked really good. And he was the only one who defensively was able to actually cope with all of what Bayern were putting forward. Uh, but Bayern, I just felt like we just gave Bayern the freedom of the wings, which I think we give a lot of teams that to be honest, because yeah. it's so narrow because the fullbacks like to invert, because uh, um, that's how we build up as soon as we lose the ball where there's just acres of space on both sides on the wing and it's I feel like it's too easy at the moment for uh, wingers to get a lot of joy out of us and it is something that if Ange doesn't sort that out if we if we keep giving joy to these wingers and we're not opening teams up um, with enough regularity it's going to cost him it will mm. uh, and, and as much as I love Ange and I'm, I'm not I, I can't just base that or just off today but like we, we're gonna have to sort out this issue of I, I know and I know again we didn't have a lot of defenders on the pitch today Romero Van der Ven or Doggy so we're gonna have to wait to see when they're back but it was a problem even when they were playing the, the acres of space we give to wingers and it was definitely evident today yeah I guess like in that sense like Van der Ven uh, using his pace we made up for it a lot of times and got out of jail because of Van der Ven and his pace and because of the aggressiveness of Kuti Romero as well but um, I want to talk about Kulisevsky because I thought, again, he was probably looking our most uh, dangerous attacker mm. on the pitch in the number nine. Um, I mean, again, his pre-season is just going from strength to strength. I, think, I don't think he was as strong as maybe some of his previous games, but still, it was he was probably our most dangerous player on the pitch. Yeah, well, he's up against you know Kim Min Jae and he's up against the top defenders uh, compared to who was up before where he could... I felt like the players he was up against before, you could really go toe-to-toe physically with them. This one, it was a bit more challenging. He did have his moments, though. There was that one moment in the first half where I think... Um, I can't remember which defender it was, but he, re- he had... He had one of the defenders on toast in, inside the penalty box, twisting yeah. and turning, yeah. and he'll be disappointed. It was Kim and Jay, I think. I think, well, yeah, it might, might have been. He was, and he, his shot was ended up being blocked, but <coughs> he would be really disappointed. He couldn't get a shot because he did so well in that position, uh, faking and getting that, earning that space. And I thought he was giving them a bit of trouble with his little twists and uh, you know his little flicks. But unfortunately, he also nearly scored, didn't he? He had a shot in that second half, which just uh, went past the post, uh, which was a shame. It was very, very close. Um, but yeah, I thought he did well. Again, look, you're, you're, you're asking Deki to play up front against Bayern Munich, a top team. And obviously it's not going to be easy for him, especially he's new to the role. And not I, thought, o- I thought he did all right. Not only are you asking him to play number nine against a Bayern Munich team that seemed a lot fresher than us, um, the heat conditions, everything that we've had to go through, the gruelling conditions that we've had here over the last week um, in Japan and Korea. So it's been a very hard week uh, for the players, uh, having to train in these conditions day in, day out. They go home tomorrow, we play in a week's time in London against the same opposition. It'll be interesting to see how we take to that game as in comparison to this one. Yeah, one a bit of, uh, one frustrating cameo I felt was um, Timo Werner when he came on. I thought he was really frustrating. He got into so many good positions and so many opportunities to put on a few chances, especially when he was on the right-hand side. He had acres of space, but his final ball was just dreadful. It's not, uh, which is something which he's actually been quite good at. Uh, at Spurs, you know, playing an A on chances, but I thought today was very frustrating. But look, <laughs> what about Brendan Johnson? I thought he was Brendan completely well. anonymous today. Yeah, he, the, the only one thing I remember, there was actually one uh, uh, moment in the first half where he had a really good run on his defender and he had acres of space in front of him and he somehow allowed the defender to catch up with him. I'm thinking, how hey, you're rapid, how are you allowing that? Maybe it's just tiredness, maybe it's uh, the trip catching up with him, but um, he did look very leggy. Look, 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 I think we'll just have to put it down to. Um, tough conditions, a lot of uh, um, you know, a lot of time spent in Asia, and it was near the end of the trip, and uh, it's obviously going to be an exhausting game, and obviously Bayern are a lot fresher, so it's no surprise that we did lose and uh, that we looked very, very leggy. Um, but there are still, you know, some concerns, genuine concerns about how we set up, um, how much encouragement we always constantly give to the opposition when we're not creating enough chance ourselves, um, and you know. We're not long till the season now, and there's still, it feels like there's still quite a lot to do with this team. It doesn't, this team looks good. I'm not saying it's in a bad way, but 
I don't know. It just doesn't feel like we're gonna we're ready for when you when you yet. when you see a lot of the the pieces of the jigsaw are not there. You know, you spoke about Van de Ven and Romero, our two starting centre backs. We're we're playing with one natural centre back through this whole tour, and the, it was the first game he started today. He came on for 15 minutes last game, went off at half time this game. So I think you're always going to see these kind of cracks. Um, but to be honest, but, we, but these players were here last season, played in the, in our bad runs last season, played in our good runs as well. But I'm just saying, like they they, they aren't the fix of all our issues because we have those issues it's going to look a lot the better with them than without them that's for sure we haven't looked bad this preseason. i'm not saying we've looked bad i'm just saying i don't know it just it feels like there's uh, with this team especially in the forward areas a lot of work to do i feel um and i don't know if we're going to be ready for the new season we'll well, we need we need signings through the door that's that's what it comes down to we've been calling for it ever since the season finished last year we were told we were going to get early transfers in it hasn't happened um, so let's hope we go back to London. Well, the team go back to London tomorrow. So let's hope they can get their asses in gear and, and get some signings through the door, particularly in the forward line. Um, but just one thing I wanted to mention, actually, in these two games in Korea, Mano Solomon, not one minute. Didn't play at all, did he? Yeah, yeah you're yeah, right. Well, he played against Japan, didn't he? Uh, against Vissel, yeah. Kobe, and uh, hasn't played at all. Is Ever since a, we saw yeah. him getting that talking to from Ryan Mason on the yeah, open train, right. maybe he that hasn't was played. A little bit of an exclusive there. Uh, maybe is that an indication of where he is at the moment? And are we not are one we, minute. It's mad. Are we uh, genuinely looking to get rid of him at You've this point? You've got players like George Abbott that's getting more minutes than Romano Solomon. Yeah, but it's weird they put him front and center of a lot of the uh, content didn't yeah. they, with, uh, um, with Porro and stuff. So uh, I don't know whose decision that was, but look, there are rumours that we want to sell him, and that would definitely play into that, wouldn't it? Uh, if, he's, if he's not getting any minutes when the youngsters are. So. Emerson's getting more minutes, and it's rumoured that he's going out the door tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> So, I, I, look, you can read a lot into that, to be honest, whether uh, does that mean he's out the door. It's not, it's not really rumours that he's close to leaving. Um, and you would have thought as well, if he is staying, like he's going to need those uh, minutes to catch up with his fitness because he's been out for so long. Yep. So this is really a crucial time for him to get back on the pitch and he hasn't been able to. So it looks like, yeah, maybe he will be out the, out the door. All right, well, that is us over and out from the World Cup Stadium in Seoul. We go to Chungchang tomorrow. Chungchang. Son, Chungchang, sorry. Sonny's hometown. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. Big up to David in the back. And um, that is it. We fly home on Monday. So we'll see you all very soon. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on Spurs.